So the next question here is from Brian. And, and Brian asks, what is your preferred marketing strategy for getting a niche business app successful? Okay, so the very first thing, with assuming you've got the app in the first place, the very first steps are making sure that your metadata, as Apple will call it, which means your name, the title of the app, the description, the description that you have, the screenshots, which by far and away are 10 times, 100 times the most important thing right now in getting right. Screenshot, you know, it's very rare in marketing that, that you know, you can give people a piece of advice and double or triple uh, the, the impact of what they're doing. With screenshots right now, we are seeing that. And indeed, if you tuned in a couple of episodes ago, um, you saw a couple of examples where screenshots were not good as compared to good, and you could see the difference. So screenshots are part of that initial data too. And they have to be, like any app, being it an app, being it anything else, the very first thing you have to ask is, how is this app addressing my markets, pains, gains, and jobs to be done? How is it being a pain reliever for the biggest pains that they have? And how am I telling people about that in the metadata of the app, the screenshots, the description, the uh, heading, right, the subtitle? All of these things go to helping you get downloads. Oh, and one other thing, uh, both in Google, Android, and iOS in particular, your downloads are directly related to the iTunes Connect keywords. You've got literally 100 bytes. That's right, you heard me correctly, not characters, bytes. Because in China um, and in some of the uh, Chinese languages, one character actually takes up more than one byte. So most in uh, most uh, European languages and those based on the English alphabet, uh, most of those characters relate to one byte. There's a piece of trivia for you. However, those keywords are the things that are going to directly relate. Now, of course, the other thing is, you know, how, you know, I used to, and it applies as well today, how can I tell whether an app is going to be incredibly successful or not? And it's a, like a continuum or a ruler. At one end of the ruler, you just let your app out into the, to the wild. You just put it up there. That'll get you about a one in terms of success. You may luck out. That would be right. But do you know how I can absolutely guarantee that your app will be a success in your chosen market? It's pretty simple. Have a mailing list of a few thousand people and mail them about your new app. That's how you guarantee the success of your app. You know, the fundamentals don't change just because it's an app. You know, you still need to be able to, you know, you take advantage of all of the, the assets that you have. Uh, building a list... Like we say, the, the, you know, the fourth very important key focus of business is list building. You know, building that list is important. Now, apps give you a lot of fascinating marketing opportunities right now. They're the most interesting and dynamic form of lead generation and advertising full stop right now. Because on Facebook, you can do app-based advertising, which we know because Facebook have published the data is the by far and away the most successful ad unit on Facebook right now in terms of um, impact and, uh, and, and return is the app ad unit. So you can go and target for your particular uh, niche business, for example, you can target Facebook groups that are about that particular um, type of business. You could target competitors their Facebook pages, you can say, I want to create an ad, which only show, and by the way, you can say to Facebook, and I only want to show this when a device that can accept my app is looking at Facebook. So you can even target it down to the micro level, as you should do with all fa Facebook campaigns. They're about, you want to have hundreds of ads targeting very specific markets rather than having one ad trying to capture everything. So that would be a thing that you do as well, all right? So, um, you know, looking at ways that you can promote that app. Of course, the big daddy of them all is coming. Uh, don't know exactly when, but it's sooner rather than later. We're talking September, October. And of course, that is the advent of pay per tap advertising. And without doubt, 
it's going to be as impactful as Google pay-per-click when it first started out, Facebook ads when they first started out, um, SEO when it first started out. For the very first time on the biggest and most profitable app store on the planet, the place where people with disposable income spend their money, and I'm, of course, talking about the Apple app store. You know, forget your biases here. It's just the facts, all right? Um, people who spend money have Apple. It's that simple. Sorry, I hope, you know, you're you not offended by that, but that's just the reality. And you're now going to be able to, with no minimum bid, you're going to be able to target app names, you're going to be able to target trademarks, you're going to be able to target everything. It is literally open season, and Apple have done this very, very deliberately because they want to help out small and independent businesses. And that's the way you help them out, is by enabling paper tap advertising. Did I mention no minimum bid? So if you've got a particular type of niche style business, then you are, you know, you're in the box seat because you know how many people are going to do paper tap advertising on kiteboarding or pottery valuation or piano stool restoration, and we know sixty five percent of downloads come from that store. So it's a very the next six months as it comes to app mobile. And app advertising with paper tap coming to the Apple App Store, it's going to be the wild, wild west. We can't wait for it. Um, the things that you can do to prepare for it are exactly the things I've talked about during this answering your question, Brian. It's how many downloads am I currently getting? Of those people who see my app, how many of them are actually downloading? Because Apple, and based on our own data from Madcast and Scriptcast, you should be seeing about 40% downloads. I'm seeing working with a lot of clients at the moment that are way less. And why? Number one reason by so far, it's not funny, it's like up here, all the other reasons are down here, is screenshots. Really poor looking screenshots that don't tell you anything, that don't sell, don't address people's pains, gains, and jobs to be done. They're the, by far, by far, the number one thing. Then, of course, it's app name. You've got to get your description right. The description, they don't, App Store doesn't limit the, uh, in any practical sense, what you can write in the description for your app. So you should be writing a long form sales letter. Here's the reasons why you should be downloading this app. You know, you shouldn't be leaving it to chance. You know, you've got a real opportunity here to connect with your market, and most people don't use it. They throw up a couple of boilerplate lines, and that's it, right? Which is insane. So they're the things that you uh, should be looking at, amongst other things, Brian. Hopefully that is is helpful.